Last year, the NBL gave us the likes of Jay Sean Tate, RJ Hampton, and of course, LaMelo Ball as rookies to watch during this NBA season. With the new NBL season kicking off this week, I'm joined here today by Lachlan Everett from Hoops Habit to break down the new hottest prospects in Australia and New Zealand. This is Florence Ceiling. So I guess we should start things off with, I guess, the two prospects that are the most highly touted, Mojave King and Josh Giddy. They actually played each other a few days ago in preseason, and I'm interested in knowing what your takeaways from the game were, because I thought Giddy had a much better game than King, but I think that King might be the better prospect long term. So I'm curious to see what you think. Well, Going off this game, if you went off this game alone, you would think that Josh Giddy is the uh, better prospect. But um, King struggled from the field. He wasn't in his groove at all. He, um, I don't know. It's I think it was a bit of just, just didn't fall on the right night. And I think that was a shame because that was a lot of NBA scouts. I imagine some of their first experiences with those guys. I know a couple of them were watching the Giddy preseason and a couple with the Mojo of King. But when you look at the um, views on YouTube, Twitch, um, it was plus 15K thousand, like if you combine them all. So there were definitely eyes on it. And if you're taking away from that, like King looked not great, but I would say in the long-term future, I would still consider Giddy as the better prospect. And I'm curious to know, I think that for King, my biggest question about him is his shot because I think that he has real potential as a guy who can cut to the basket or slash. And I think that he might even be able to handle the ball a little bit in the future at the NBA level. But I think his shot is just very inconsistent at this stage. Um, I would say, so preface this, my experience with these guys is I've watched Josh Giddy in the, let me get it exactly right the FIBA Asia Cup 2021 qualifiers, which was about four games, as well as the NBL one. And that's about, and these preseason games, I'm not someone who puts a lot of stock into um, like the NBA global Academy and stuff like that. So the stuff about it is very limited of what I've seen, but with King, I've seen a little bit with the global Academy, he's actually improved his shot a lot. And I would say that now his, um, going from like the shooting, I think that's no longer his biggest weakness. I'd consider his biggest weakness to be um, his handle on the ball now. And we've seen that just a little bit in the preseason. The best game with 21 points against Melbourne United, he was going really well, driving to the ring and shooting from deep, but he wasn't creating his own shot as much. So for me, it's now towards creating off the dribble more so than actually shooting. I agree with you. And I think that Giddy, um, from what I saw this preseason, and I've seen a few of his games with the NBA Global Academy, um, basically the youth tournaments that he played in Spain last year. And I think that Giddy, his biggest worry for me right now at the next level, meaning the NBA and if it was, you know, college basketball as well, if he had gone that path, is his athleticism. Although I do think that once he gets a little bit downhill, he gets ahead of steam, he can really explode. And, you know, he even had like a big dunk. We saw, yeah, game. that dunk was the one I was going to point out that if he gets momentum and he's got a lane, he will dunk it. But I agree, his athleticism is not what we would hope in a 2021 first round prospect. But I will say this though, Giddy, even if he, even if he doesn't make the home run pass, I should say, although he's able to do it for sure. But even if he doesn't do that, I just think that he's such a smart player on the floor. And I think that, even when he's just doing the little things, it really helps his team come together and connect. And just the basketball that he plays, it just flows really well. Oh, he's got, um, that's, I've got in my notes, he's got the factor. That's when it comes to passing, he is going to be able to do that at any level. And I'm not worried about his playmaking or his passing when he gets to the NBA. It's all the other stuff. I'm, concerned about the athleticism especially defensively laterally he is not uh, let's say excellent but he is capable um his man-to-man 
he's definitely smart, but he lacks that lateral um, speed to get through. And he's he suffers from the Lamelo ball issue where you play defense and then you just let them go straight through your body straight to the ring and that's a concerning thing when you're six eight and you've got that wingspan giddy should be able to you know contest people when they're driving or at least get a body in front of them so i'd say the athleticism is an issue i would say an issue but it's the thing that you would critique him most on which can develop he's only 18 19 but i don't see it dramatically increasing to a point where it's a strength compared to a neutral aspect of his game definitely and for those viewers who are watching maybe this video for the first time and you know our discussion might pick their interest what do you think that Gideon King's roles will be for their respective teams this upcoming NBL season so starting with Giddy, he'll be your lead playmaker for the uh, Adelaide 36ers there's no doubt about that he will bring up the ball nearly every possession when it comes to the half court, he is going to be running pick and rolls with Daniel Johnson, who's a good three-point shooter, and you know setting screens with Isaac Humphrey, who was with the Haw- the Atlanta Hawks of recent. But um, when it comes to just lead playmaking, I would compare it to, um, off the top of my head, it would be, God, I'm trying to think. Give me a second. Uh... Yeah, no worries, man. <sighs> I would compare it to like the opposite of Jason Tatum, Kemba Walker, like Kemba Walker is going to bring up the ball, but, and he's going to score a bit, but he's bringing up the ball where, and then Jason Tatum in the half court is your scorer. And that's what their recent import will be. Donald Sloan. Sloan that's it. Um, he came over from the States. He's going to be your primary scorer on the perimeter, but um, Giddy in that case will bring up the ball like Kemba and then they'll take turns between who handles the ball. And then, that's up to um, Connor Henry, the coach, to figure out who how that system works. And then um, for King, I would say he's more of your spark plug off the bench. And if you're optimistic, he's your 3 and D wing in the starting lineup next to Scott Machado. And, you know, we've touched on King and Giddy now. You mentioned LaMelo Ball earlier. So last year we had the Next Stars program with Ball, with RJ Hampton, this year with Giddy, with King. But Don't there's also a Terry few, Armstrong. <laughs> definitely Terry Armstrong. I'm not even sure what he's doing these days. I think he. I don't really know either. I, um, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I don't know what happened there. The uh, the thing I was told was defense. It just wasn't up to snuff. And I went to a few closed practices at SEM, and it looked a bit rough. But I hope he gets somewhere because I enjoyed his highlight. I enjoyed his athleticism. I was courtside on one game. Definitely. And he was dunking it. <laughs> So with Armstrong, with Ball, with Hampton, with Giddy, with King, but there's also guys outside of the Next Stars program who are at least worth keeping an eye on, in my opinion, even if it's not NBA, but, you know, it might be college basketball in the case of Tane Murray, who will be playing for the University of Virginia in the next few years. Um, to Maury Wigness, who he got a little bit of hype in the last few years. I don't think he's an NBA guy. But, you know, he might be able to stick around in the NBL or hop over to Europe at some point in his career. Do you think that there are any other young guys who viewers should really be watching this season? So I'll briefly explain how it works. It's, um, for example, Jay Sean Tate is the most recent to come out. He was a young guy. He played at Iowa and then he didn't get drafted. He went to Belgium and then he played in Australia and now he's in with the Houston Rockets. So when it comes to the NBL, when it comes to overseas players, they come over, they play a couple of years here and then they move on to Europe or um, the NBA and then some of them stay like a Bryce Cotton. But when it comes to young guys, there are two kinds. There are the Aussies who are homegrown and either go to college or stay here and play in the NBA for a very long time or the quote next stars, which I'm calling Justinian Jessup, for example, who played in college all four years, I believe, but is still classified as a next star, even though he's finished college. So there's the difference between your RJ Hampton, who skipped college, and Justinian Jessup, who played all four years. So it's a messy term, but for young guys who you should be watching, I'd say Wigness, I watched him in the NBL one, which is the G League equivalent, I would say, of the NBL. It's a semi-professional tournament, but he played for um, 
AIS, which is the um, Global Academy in Australia. He's an interesting thing. I don't know how it's going to work with him in the bullets. I assume he's on the bench as your backup point guard. But for me, I've got down four guys that everyone should be keeping an eye on. I'd say Harry Frolling is a big man who could shoot the three. His athleticism is not anything special, but he really has, like, he's smart. He can defend the ring and he can shoot threes. I'm waiting for him to actually translate that into really big NBL minutes. But I, he plays for the Bullets. I really hope he takes the next step and I hope he can under Andre Lamanis. So Kuat Noy, he was undrafted. He has a real chance of actually, like, he was a real chance to get drafted. He plays for the Cairns Taipans and he has Scott Machado, former NBA point guard, to give him the ball. Um, so I would keep an eye on him. He's going to be a probably most improved candidate, even though it's his second season. That's murky, but he might get it as well. But he's going to have a lot of opportunity in Cairns with DJ Nubel moving to Japan, going to Japan because they reduced the two Im- the imports rule down to two instead of three. So I'd say he's someone you really need to look at. If if anyone out of this, I would say quite noise the watch the young guy. Um, Dang Adele is another guy. He plays for the the Hawks. He, um, well, that's a whole thing, but um, he, he was with the Cavs of most recent. He's young. He's going to be under Brian Gorgian, the best Australian coach in history. So expect big things from him. And then the other guy is Angus Glover. He plays for the Sydney Kings. He's going to be your 3 and D backup point guard sort of guy. He plays great defense. He's really athletic. He can shoot it really well. He didn't show it last year, but... I'd say out of those four, Quatnoy is your biggest one. The guy who's going to go quickly if he improves is probably um, Harry Froling. Yeah, I agree. And um, I'll definitely be keeping an eye on those four guys this season. I know that Froling had some buzz going back to last summer. But as you said, he's still really yet to translate it on the court consistently. And I know that for me, Quatnoy, he already stood out when he was playing um, over at TCU in the States. But now from what I've seen this preseason, what I've been able to catch on him last season as well, he really yeah, does seem an like someone last who is, season as well. Yeah, and he's yeah. definitely looking to, I think, as you said, he's going to be in that MIP um, candidacy. But I'm also looking from him to see kind of this improved playmaking for himself off the dribble that I've seen him flash this preseason. And he just looks a lot more comfortable taking the three as well. Yeah, and you've got to be able to do that, especially down here. And I assume that Scott Machado is going to set him up really well and Cam Oliver and Nate Jarwai are going to set him really big screens. So I don't doubt he's got all the opportunity in that system and on that team. It's just up to him to do it, and I believe he can. Lachlan, I really appreciate you coming on, man. Um, It was great talking to you, and I'm sure I'll have you back on soon to either, you know, talk about the NBL a bit more as the action really gets underway this week. Um, I know that you also cover the Raptors. I know that you write about the NBA in general for Hoops Habit. So do you have anything that viewers should watch, um, they should follow you on? So the big one's Twitter, at Lockie Everett, L-A-C-H-I-E-E-V-E-R-E-T-T. So all of my stuff is on Twitter. I'm on the Raptors and Grizzlies beat for Hoops Habit and Most of my stuff's about those two, but I sneak in the occasional NBL content and I've sort of become the LaMelo Ball expert for obvious reasons. I've transferred my NBL knowledge over to that and I've gotten a lot of love on that for Twitter, as you can imagine. (laughs) Um, But yeah, so a little bit of NBL stuff, little, and then mostly um, Raptors Grizzlies. My most recent was about LaMelo Ball. Should he start? That got a lot of love. Um, and then my most, my next piece is likely going to be a Chris Boucher piece, and I've really enjoyed him on the Raptors. He's definitely been, been tremendous this season. I think, you know, his blocks, obviously, they're going to get a lot of buzz, but I think he's really come on as an offensive player. He had player seven well. blocks. And all of them were, you know... The in, like, 20 minutes. <laughs> he had, yeah. like, seven <laughs> blocks a game in, like, 20 minutes. It's absurd, but that's a whole other thing. Hopefully, the Raptors do figure it out, though. I mean... Len Baines getting, you know, DNPs, coach decisions. 
hopefully they figure it out on that end of the floor. I know Siakam's been getting his. I'm trying to five, figure it you know, out. And in Ovi too. <laughs> like, <laughs> right, if man, Nick but... Nurse can't figure it out, I can't figure it out. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, Nick Nurse, for me, he's one of the best coaches in the NBA, but I think he'll figure it out eventually. Um, I had a video about Jalen Green out on the channel a few, I think like a week or two ago, and I had a Raptors fan actually comment, you know, I hope that we get him. I don't think it's going to get that bad to where the Raptors, you know, are like a top five pick. But He's the J-League kid, isn't he? Yeah, uh, G-League kid out of California, you know. The Unite point guard. Is it, what's it called? Unite or Ignite? Uh, Ignite, Ignite. Yeah, he was apparent. He was like on the verge of being a next star, but something, something G League. All right. Well, I'll have all of your links down in the description. Make sure to follow Lachlan on Twitter, read his articles. Thanks for joining me, man. And I'll catch you guys next time.